Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Melanie and I'm the Redheaded Homemaker. Thank you for joining me in my kitchen today. I'm sorry I haven't been posting a lot of videos, but the month of December was a little crazy for me and my family. We ended up getting the dreaded word, the virus that's going around. I won't say it so YouTube don't ban me or anything like that, but me and my husband both had it and we were really, really sick. Um, I believe I had it from, I think I got it, I think I got tested on the 9th and I did not go back to work until the 28th and even then I did not feel 100%. It was the worst virus I've ever, ever had. It was probably 10 times worse than the flu that I've ever had and I pray that none of y'all get this mess because it is horrible. But we're healthy now and things are getting better. Um, some of my family members had it, so if you could, please pray for them. But I have missed everyone. I really do love doing these videos. And I've had a couple of questions about my cast iron on my glass top stove. So today, I thought I would do a video on different types of cast iron, what I know about them. I know very little about cast iron, so I'm no expert at all. So just take it. This is what I do. Um... I just wanted to show you like how I use my cast iron on my glass top stove without scratching it. Uh, the different types of cast iron that I have. I know there's probably a plethora of cast iron out there, but this is what I have. This is what I know. So I hope this video helps you today. If you like my videos, please hit the subscribe button and give me a thumbs up because it does help my channel. And I just want to thank all of you that have subscribed to my channel. I think I have 275 subscribers, which is more than I thought I would ever have doing just these little videos that I do. But I really do love doing them and it gives me something to do on the weekends when I'm not working. So this is kind of like my outlet. I love the kitchen. I love being in the kitchen. I love cooking. I love making food for my friends and family. And it really stinks right now because I'm not able to make my goodies that I usually take to work for everyone. Because of the C word, I'm not able to take any kind of food or anything like that to work. But usually, I love to bake goodies and take them to work. It just makes me happy to see a smile on people's faces. So, I'm going to go over some cast iron that I have and what I do for my glass top stove. And if you have any questions, drop them in the comment section below and I'll try to answer them for you. But like I said, this is what I know for cast iron. So, I hope this video helps you. Okay, so you're not going to probably be able to see me, but I'm going to go over some different types of cast iron right now. So this right here you can get, <clears throat> this is what I call enameled cast iron. This is what I cook, like my soups, uh, my chili beans. Uh, if you're going to do a roast in the oven, this can all go in here. So it is cast iron because you can see the raw cast iron around the edge, but the inside of the pot is enameled. So you don't have, it's not as hard to clean up as like normal cast iron would be. So this is your enameled cast iron and trust me, it's just as heavy as normal cast iron. And I keep a cast iron, if you ever notice in my videos, I have a little cast iron pot on my stove. This is a lodge cast iron pot. I use this pot for like, if I'm heating up a can of corn or peas or green beans, whatever. This pot, I use this pot all the time. Um, my mom always kept a little pot on her stove. so. I keep a little pot on my stove and every time I look at it, it just makes me think of my mom. So I'm sorry you can't see my face, but all right. Now this right here, I did get at Sam's Club. Um, most of these, I, like the my enameled cast iron, other than the Lodge one, I believe I got most of them at, at Sam's and I probably have about eight or 10 enameled cast iron pots. So I know I'm weird. All right. Now this one right here, I got at Sam's. I hadn't seen anything like it when I bought it, but I'm sure they're out there everywhere. This is enameled cast iron, but the lid is cast iron enameled on the inside as you can see, but let me set this over here. The inside of the frying pan is, it's light cast iron, but it does have a good coating on it, which I've built up layers on it too, but it's raw like cast iron. So, but it's enameled on the outside. So you can see the bottom is really smooth, so it's good for your glass top stove, but it is cast iron on the inside. Um, I haven't tried to fry chicken in this one yet, I'm trying to think of what I have cooked. I fried potatoes in it, but it didn't have enough seasoning on the cast iron to keep it from sticking. So I really need to keep building up my, my coats of seasoning before I try to cook a lot of stuff in it. But, okay, now this is an enameled cast iron frying pan. Um, a friend of mine got this for me that I work with, and it's enamel on the inside, and you can see the raw cast iron on the outside. Let me set this over there also. Sorry for that. But it's the frying pan itself is enameled on the inside. So this would be good for chicken. 
Um, anything you're frying, it would be good in this. Potatoes, anything like that. Now, I will say, I've noticed with my enamel cast iron, um, you do need to let your oil, even with your regular cast iron, let your oil get up to the temperature you want it to get at where you're frying. Don't ever put anything that you're frying in cold oil. One, it will stick, and two, it'll probably pull your coating off. So, that's just something that I've learned over the years. Um, I hope you can see me. That I've learned over the years is make sure you get your oil to temperature. Um, whatever you're cooking, probably 350, 375, I believe. Um, try to get your oil up to temperature. I take the end of a wooden spoon and put it in there, and if it starts bubbling, I know it's hot enough, but that's just my little trick. All right, now I'm going to move you because we're going to get into the black cast iron. Now, my pieces of cast iron... Most of my pieces are old. I hope you can, let me see if I can cut this light on. Okay. All right. So now this right here, I know there are several types of cast iron. Let me talk to you for a minute. So you have your old cast iron. That's going to be your Wagner, your Griswold, your BS. I'm trying to think if it's BSV. I think it's BSV. And then you have one that starts with a V. It's Valruth, I think is how you pronounce it. Those are your old cast irons. Those are the cast irons. If you go to a yard sale and you see them really cheap, grab them. They're worth money. Promise me. I know. I mean, promise you. I, pr I promise you. I know they're worth money. So I do have several Griswolds and I do have several Wagners. Those have a different finish on them than your newer Lodge. I know a lot of people are buying Lodge and there's nothing wrong with Lodge. But I'm going to tell you, your surface finish from your Griswolds and your Wagners and your BSVs or BSTs, whatever it is, and your Valruth, your finish is going to be a lot smoother than your Lodge. Your Lodge is going to have a grainier surface. It's going to feel gritty when you run your finger over it. If you run your fingers over any of the other ones that I named, the Wagners, the Griswolds, the other one, it's going to be like glass. It's going to be almost like a non-stick skillet when you when you get those older ones, if they are, if they are kept nice. I'll also do a video on how I restore cast iron because I do restore a lot of cast iron that I buy. I bought cast iron pieces that were so rusted, I didn't even know if they had a name on the bottom of them. And it's so easy to do when you're, if you have an, if you have an oven that has um, self-clean cycle on it, cast iron is really easy to do in that. All I do is flip them over, put one rack in there, flip them over upside down, cut your self-clean cycle on, let it run through your self-clean cycle, let it cool down because it's going to be so hot when it opens the door, and then you're going to scrub it with Dawn and... Um, warm water you're going to scrub it really really good get all the rust get everything off of it and then you're going to start building up layers i'll try to do a video on that but i did want to show you like this is where everybody talks about me using cast iron on my glass top stove but i'm going to show you some tricks so i'm going to move you back down here okay this right here and i do believe this is one of those be the the stove ones i was talking about the bsrs but i'm not sure i should have done a little bit more research okay if you look at the bottom of this pan it has a heat ring around it right here. This is called a full heat ring. But it also has this little, I'm sorry, I hit the camera. It also has this little buildup right here, okay? This right here, I do use on my glass top stove. I do not use this at high heat. The only thing I use in this pan right here, if you can tell, it's like a griddle, is I make grilled cheese sandwiches. That is about the only thing I use on my this pan for right here. You probably could make pancakes. The reason I'm saying this, this ring right here, this is called a full heat ring, okay? On a glass top stove, if you get it too hot, it could create a suction and it could crack your cat, your glass top stove. So I'm really careful if I use this pan, but I love this pan to make grilled cheese sandwiches. And I want you to notice the finish. It almost looks like a piece of glass. It is so smooth. Like you don't, I mean, it is just so smooth. And I've let the layers build up on this too. Every time I make grilled cheese sandwiches, I clean it off really good. I put just a little bit of oil on it, and I put it on the stove, and I've, I've just let my seasoning build up on this one. Okay, let's see what I got next. Okay, now this is, this is a Griswold. This right, I don't know if you can tell. Try to get it. Okay, this is a Griswold. It's made in Erie, Pennsylvania. This cast iron skillet is, I think I got it off of the mark, Facebook Marketplace. It also has a full heat ring right here. So I try, I very seldom ever use this pan on my stove. And if I do, I'm heating something up and I'm not using a high temperature on the stove. This, you can tell, I don't use this pan much. It probably needs to be re -se it probably needs to be re-cleaned and re-seasoned. But the, the bottom of it is just so smooth. Okay, now that's your Griswold. Okay, 
Now I'm going to show you. Okay, this is Wagner. This is another. This is my favorite of all the cast iron skillets that I have. Wagner brand is my favorite. It does not have a heat ring. It is completely flat on the bottom, so I can use it on my cast iron stove. You can see. Can you see the finish on this cast iron skillet? I use this skillet all the time. It is so. It is just like glass. I love this skillet. I actually have, I think, three or four Wagners, or maybe more, but these are the ones I use the most on my stove, is this one right here, because it does not have a heat ring, it is completely smooth on the bottom, and I don't, I don't worry about anything happening to my stove when I use this cast iron skillet. Okay, this right here. This right here is an old lodge skillet. I have not seasoned it yet, but I wanted, the reason I wanted to show it to you was, this, the bottom of this one, the surface finish is really, really smooth. Just like my Wagner's and my Griswold, the surface finish is really, really smooth. I haven't built my layers up on it yet with my oil. That's why it looks so dull. But if you look on the back side, and I hope you can see this, it does have a heat ring right here, okay? The difference between this heat ring and the Griswold heat ring, this is called a three-notch lodge. The reason it's called a three-notch lodge, I don't know if you can tell, but there's a notch right here. There's a notch right here. There's a notch right here. Now, what that does, it creates like a filter, or I don't know how I should say it, an escape for your heat to go out of when you're cooking it on your glass top stoves. Of course, when they designed these cast iron skillets, the glass top stoves wasn't even in the picture. But this right here, I would not be scared to use on my stove because it is a three notch lodge. Now, I have seen people, or I have heard of people, let me put it like that, take their Griswolds and get a grinder and they grind notches in this heat ring right here. That's good. If you're going to use a Griswold, that is great. And I, that, nothing is wrong with that. But the thing that you're doing is you're taking away from the value of that cast iron skillet. Sorry, I don't want you to see my messy table because it is messy. I just went to the grocery store and everything's laying on my table. You're taking away value from your Griswold cast iron skillet if you ever want to sell it. I mean, I would never sell any of my cast iron. So if I did one of mine, it wouldn't bother me, but I would hate to see somebody do that to a Griswold cast iron skillet that could be worth two, three, four hundred dollars. They've ruined it and now they can't get any money out of it. So just take that piece of advice, whatever. But anyway, so okay, we've went over the Griswold with the full heat ring. We've went over the Wagner that has no heat ring and we've went over the three notch lodge. And I've talked about surface finishes on all of all of those because these are all old cast iron skillets. If I if I understand correctly, when they used to form the cast iron skillets back in the olden days, they poured the cast iron into a mold, and the mold I don't think the mold was reusable, and that's why they had such a good surface finish on them. And I'm I'm telling you, I may not know what I'm talking about on this. So if I if I don't know what I'm talking about. Please drop it in the comment section below. I do have like two new pieces of lodge that is not enameled. I have this griddle that I bought at the lodge store. And I'm gonna run my fingernails over it so you can hear how gritty it is. It is really gritty. Like, it feels like tiny, tiny pebbles all over the surface of this. Some people say that is really, really good to cook on because it raises your food up, raise, it puts air pockets under your food and it's supposed to flip easier. I have not found that to be true. I found that I can cook like my fried chicken and stuff in my Griswolds or my Wagner a lot easier than I can with this lodge. And on the back of this lodge, it does not have a heat ring. It just has a recessed place all the way around it. So I would not, I'm not scared to use this on my glass, glass top stove at all. But there is a difference in your cast iron. For me personally, I would rather go to a yard sale, an estate sale, an antique store, and buy a Griswold, a Wagner, the BSRs, the Vol Roofs, I think I'm saying that right. I would rather buy those than I would the new Lodge. Only because I like the surface finish of the old cast iron a lot better. But it's your preference. But anyway, I just wanted to go over all the different cast irons that I have and what little I do know about them. And I know very little about cast iron and why, why you see me use different ones on my cast iron, on, on my glass top stove, sorry. Um, I'm not scared to use um, cast iron on my glass top stove, but I will say don't slide your cast iron, pick it up. Don't slide it off the burner because it could scratch your glass top stove. My glass top stove is scratched from just, because I, I cook on it so much. Um, my next goal, hopefully, I will get a gas stove and I won't have to worry about it. I can use any cast iron on it. 
but as of right now I have a glass top stove so I'm trying to I mostly use you'll mostly see me use my enamel cast iron but I do get out my Wagner I mean my grizzle yeah my Wagner and I will use my Wagner on my glass top stove and like I said I do use this little pan right here when I make grilled cheese sandwiches and that's the reason I bought this one is so I can make like four grilled cheese sandwiches at one time but I don't like the surface finish on this and I just don't feel like it releases as good as the the old stuff so if you got any comments drop them in the comment section below please hit the subscribe button I hope you enjoyed this video today I know I did a lot of talking and I probably talked really fast so if you have any questions drop them in the comment section below and thanks for watching the redheaded homemaker and I can't wait to do my next video with y'all have a great day